History and these number one station for hip hop and R&B. Ash Mac here with a hot exclusive, and I got Quality Control's very first R&B artist, Layton Green. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, blessed. Glad to be here. Yes, I'm glad you guys made time yeah. to stop by to see us today. I know you've been busy on the road, so thank you. I appreciate yeah, no the time. Problem. No problem. So I love the fact that we get to meet you now because mm -hmm. we're growing with you. We've mm -hmm. been following you. We've mm -hmm. met you. I feel like what 2017 with uh, Kodak Black's cover. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. So Rolling went viral. Facts. Now going that going viral. Mm -hmm. You know what was that and how was that experience for you? Because a lot of times you think of going viral. A lot of times people could be a hit and miss. It could be a viral right. one time, right. and then they disappear. But clearly you're here. Right. Well. When I went viral, I initially went like viral, really from Snapchat, because it was really just a Snapchat video. And I just basically capitalized. I quit my job. I was working on getting my GED at the time, and I was just like, all right, this is what I want to do. I knew this is what I wanted to do, but this was the first, like, okay, yeah, I'm about to take it serious now, <coughs> seriously now. So I just capitalized on it. I just, when I gained that platform, I just kept feeding them. Mm -hmm. And I came out with my original piece. And that's what initially got me signed, and that was back in last year, August. So, what, um, Kodak Black DM'd you, right? Not for the, not, not really just for the cover. Okay, <laughs> and this okay. this was like, yeah, a year later. Okay. So not like, he didn't really So who reached out to you first? Who really acknowledged it first? It might not have been quality control, but who acknowledged it first and was like, you know what, this is becoming something bigger um, than what you intended? Well, really, I just went viral from just people, like, those mood pages. Like, I just went viral. Like, nobody officially, like, big just hit me up and was like, oh, you know, giving me opportunities. I just really just put together. I had a, I had already been working with um, a producer mm -hmm. way before me going viral, and I got back in touch with him. So I was like, I need your help. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what else to do now that I done went viral, but mm -hmm. I want to, like, do this seriously now. So got back in contact with him. And we just built built this, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we he had created a production company. So Leveled Up Music Group, they initially signed me first. Okay. Yeah, so I got signed with them, and I was their first artist. And they just, like, held me up until I got signed to Quality Control. Now, it sounds like you took a break in between, because after you went viral with Rolling Peace, you're like, okay, you know what, this is time, I'm going to take this seriously. Uh -huh. What were you doing beforehand, and what made you maybe take a step back from music? Oh, well, I was never really taking it serious, mm -hmm. so I just always loved music, just always loved singing. I'm really the only one out of my family. So, like, my parents, they never, like, just really try to help me pursue. They really weren't in position to help me pursue in it, so no extra programs or, you know, competitions they were trying to put me in. It was just something that I love to do. I just love singing. Right. And no, yeah, then that viral moment happened, and I was just like, okay, yeah, this is where I want to take it serious. And I was actually working on getting my GD. Like I said, I mm -hmm. didn't graduate high school, so I was really just trying to get my life on track. Facts. Uh, now, does anyone in your family play any instruments, and you're the only musical person? Yeah, I'm the only one. <laughs> okay, yeah, growing one. up, if we were to ask uh, one of your family members what you would have been doing as an adult or being um, in a career, what would it have been? No, yeah, definitely a singer because <laughs> I was literally just walking around singing 24-7. You know, my mm -hmm. family didn't really notice I could sing, sing until seven, until I was seven. And yeah, I was just walking around the house singing. They'd be like, shut up. Like, girl, you're <laughs> always singing. But like, they kept me in. I was really in church all the time, so I was singing a lot of gospel songs. I wasn't in a choir, though, because I was like really a reserved, shy child. I didn't want to be in front of nobody. But nah, in the house, I'm just walking around singing. They knew I wanted to be a singer. They knew that's what I wanted to do since I'm a little girl. Isn't it dope that you're able to follow your passion, though, and, and have the the support that you have from no. strangers, from family, from people you definitely. know? Definitely. You know what I mean? It's a blessing. It's definitely a blessing. I love it. And I'm glad I'm doing something that I love because... I mean, I was going to be trying to survive either way, you know what right. I mean? I'm a hustler. I was working since I was 15, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't know this would play out the way it played out. And it's right. God willing. Congratulations Thank on you. your success. Thank you. Not only that, you're a part of the powerhouse of quality control know, music. Like, yeah. how does that feel? Because they're on top of the game. You, along with Migos, along with City mm -hmm. Girls, with a little baby. Yeah, it's, it's a real feeling. Definitely it's a real feeling, and... 
I mean, I just feel real good. My team really just really believe in me and they mm -hmm. genuinely just know I'm going to go far. So it's just a great feeling. Do you have any pressure, though, knowing that, you know, you're the first R&B queen? A little bit, sign. but I'm putting that on myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because my team, they really are supportive, and they know, they just really believe in me. Fast. Christy and P and Coach, like, they always telling me they really believe in me. So who re reached out to you first? Both of them. Both of them then? Yeah, um, through DM. Coach K DM me, and then I seen P DM me, too. But That's they dope. just was like, let's set up a meeting. I had already sat down on all labels before I sat down with them, though. So what was the selling point or, you know, what sold you? Besides the fact that, you know, they're on top, they have the biggest names yeah. in hip-hop right now. Well, really, th throughout the whole process of me meeting with these labels, I wasn't phased at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just like, I don't, I'm not really, I wasn't really excited, you know what I'm saying? Because I had got, yeah, all these numbers, but they were like my covers. And I had that original piece out, but I only had one original piece. I was like, I don't think they really know what I'm worth. Mm -hmm. Now I want them to sign me and then put me on a shelf or even sign me and try to change me because I haven't just put out to the world who I am first. Right. So that was my biggest concern. But actually sitting down with uh, Coach K and P, like, they want to know my story, where I come from, my background, and all that. And, you know, so it was more, just the, it was more than just the numbers that I was producing on online mm -hmm. and they wanted to know my story my background and all that it was just genuine, genuine now vibe. let me ask you this because i always find this uh interesting when it comes to um industry and label records and everything back in the day um i love motown and jackson five and everything else mm -hmm. but motown records you know had etiquette class and taught how um some um of the artists should act or do pr and doing interviews and everything else right. what are some things that you have learned so far from from um, Coach and Pete and anybody else that that's from the label that's really helped you with molding and grooming you. I mean, really, they just want me to be myself. Mm -hmm. They just think. I mean, I like, they just tell me to be myself and don't be, you know, get caught up in the hype. I guess because <laughs> a lot of people do get caught up in the hype mm -hmm. and what's popping right now. But being true to yourself and authentic, that's what really. It, like makes noise. Do you think that it's difficult balance with that with the time of social media because you can have a break and you can have you know the opportunity of a lifetime but at the same time you can mess that up within mm -hmm. a second of a picture of a video or someone recording you without even realizing it's like oh damn like I didn't realize this. Yeah social media is crazy. <laughs> I don't really be on that much like for real I'm gonna be honest I don't put a lot of this a lot of my business out on social media mm -hmm. just because I used to, like, before I went viral, but now that I see how many eyes are on me, and they, so fast they can just take that and just change it and flip it into something else. Right. Like, social media is just a blessing and a curse at the same it time. It is. <laughs> it really is, though, because you could create the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, the the life my life, but then it's like, I, it's just really the people on there and how they use yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it... You, Half the time, it just be people behind a blank page, zero followers, no pictures. Right. And just really just miserable. The bots. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just talking the most of, like, who are you? Facts. Okay, so even though we have the opportunity of creating our best lives and, or having it look a certain way on right. social media, how do you want to be impactful when it comes to your music and people really knowing you for who you are? I just put a lot of... Um, I really I only sing about personal experiences, and I feel like everything that I've been through is just really relatable. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a female or a male, young, old, you know what I'm saying? Like I just feel like it's just real relatable. I sing about real stuff, real experiences, and I ain't just yeah. I'm just not no, not with the hype. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not with the hype. I'm just me. I can only be me. I'm just real. I feel like. Well, congratulations on um, Leave Them Alone, too, because that's you. a big song. Yeah. You got P&B Rock, yeah, City Girls, and uh, Lil Baby on there, mm -hmm. which is dope. Um, how did you feel about having the sample for, for Sierra and the 50 Cent track? Oh, man. I, first of all, I love the original. <laughs> love it. And, nah, it's just a dope song. It just I wanted a summer bop. You know what I'm saying? A lot yeah. of my songs, like I said, is real slow and mid-tempo. So, And I can relate, obviously. I've been in love with a dope boy. 
I just thought it was a dope track. Let's do it again. So let, let's <laughs> <laughs> do it again. <laughs> Once we get out over here, huh? <laughs> um, let's let's switch it up though. Let's take love out the equation. Okay. What are what are five things like uh, you can't leave alone when it comes to you being on the road? Oh, when I'm on the road. Yeah, because you've been phone, traveling. My phone, my AirPods. I'm gonna say that right now because they seem right here. Facts. <laughs> um, I've been eating hot Cheetos like a mug. I, I can't yeah, listen. Wrong? Hot <laughs> Cheetos and for me, monsters. Hot monsters. Cheetos and monsters. Okay, and no, your drink. stomach be messed up. Look no, that. that's that is a breakfast of a champion. Oh I know. Lord, <laughs> monsters and hot Cheetos. <laughs> I get the extra hot Cheetos though. Too. That, that's where did we find these at? Yo, they at Walmart, I think. Extra hot cheese? No, they're extra. They're in like a black bag. Oh, I mean, no, I have not seen. No, I have to get those. For sure. They're the best. Like, it's just covered in it. Just, oh, my gosh. I don't That's like regular hot Cheetos no more. Oh. Yeah, so I need the extra hot Cheetos. Water. Water. Got to stay hydrated. And my cover. I got a cover I've been carrying around lately. <laughs> just good. Brando, did you hear about the fact that they're going to have a Hot Cheetos movie? It's in the works. It's, that's crazy, right? A hot Cheeto movie. I didn't ask for this, but I might watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch it, but I'm here trying to figure out what's the motive. Right. What? I didn't ask for this, but what's the message behind this hot Cheeto? Right. Movie? Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I cannot. I could only imagine. I, well, they I, made a sausage party movie. They ain't gonna make any movie. Right? Then Forever Twenty One had the clothing line for Hot Cheetos too. So you never know. Oh yeah, know. yeah, yeah. They did. There <laughs> might be a franchise here and everything else. I don't know. Maybe it's a story we we, we don't know clearly. I'm gonna tune in though. <laughs> <laughs> but we get back to your story. Okay. So, um, being signed to Quality Control, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned so far from the ladies on the label? Oh. The ladies. <laughs> right. Dang. I mean, really, the la uh, like the city girls, on, they don't care about what nobody thinks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They put themselves out there 24 7 and they don't care about what nobody said. Just how look, just look how much success they got. Right. I mean, just being real, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like all the labels on QC are just real, just themselves, and they've come far. But what I love right now with QC and all of hip hop and the music industry right now, we're seeing the time of the women mm -hmm. coming together. And whether it's R and B, whether it's trap and soul, neo soul, hip hop, and the artists, everyone is coming together and they're owning who they are yeah. and being unapologetic about right, it. Right. And and that's what I love seeing with everyone together. So mm -hmm. so how are you feeling being a part of that that movement? Especially when it comes to now you be wanting the names of being um the names that, that are mentioned in R and B and when it comes to mainstream too. Um, well, uh, I really haven't, I mean, it's just all surreal, I don't know, honestly. Um, this a blessing, I guess. It has to be. Yeah, it's a blessing. Definitely yeah. is. Okay, so what are some, or who are some artists that you would love to work with? Some um, other female artists. Well, female artists, Summer Walker, love her vibe. Um, Cardi, of course. Um... Right now, I'm really liking Megan. Yes. Yeah, Megan Stallion. Love her. And Kelani. Love her. Yes. Yes. Definitely <laughs> dope. Okay. Let's see here. Now, um, you said that you did hear from, from Kodak Black, though, right? Just on a different tip. Okay. My, my question to you, being that you're signed to Quality Control, after he made his statements about Young Miami, how did you feel about that? And did you ever speak to him about it? Oh, well, I don't talk to Kodak, yeah. Um, he, yeah, he just DM me on Twitter like a random emoji mm -hmm. type. He was just trying to holler. But, um, no, yeah, that, that was an ignorant statement. Especially it was. with her being pregnant, you know what I'm saying? And, no, nah, yeah, that's just ignorance. And really, I, I just, mm -hmm. You just kind of block all that out. He's Do you think stuff. sometimes, even now in 2019, it's difficult for men to see women be successful and be mothers at the same time and you know like it, i don't know i just feel like i don't we're seeing more of women owning who they are mm -hmm. but at the same time it's difficult for them to acknowledge the fact of you can be a mom you can be black and mm -hmm. still be successful and be on top of the world right maybe it could make them feel some type of way but 
know what I'm saying? Because women are kind of dominating right now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe make them feel a little bit smaller than what they are, but... I don't know. I don't know what these men be thinking. I don't know either. I don't know. Maybe you got a song for it? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe so. <laughs> you got a song for it? Okay, speaking of songs, I just saw that you dropped a video for I Love You. I did. Okay, you got Tariq from Power in there. Yes, I do. Shout out to him. Do you watch Power? I haven't watched the episode. No, I don't. <laughs> we have to come back to this conversation. <laughs> I have watched the episode. Okay, we have to come back to this. No, nah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into it. Don't okay. Worry. Good. So then you could call me and be like, yeah, look, I got Ash, you. I got we got to catch up. We got to talk about power. I got you. Okay. <laughs> now, when it comes to I love you, is there anyone that you loving right now? Ah. <laughs> Okay, that's I a good way. Keep it in my pocket. Keep it cute. <laughs> keep it cute. Yeah, yeah just in case it don't work out. Yeah. Hello? Speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, September is right around the corner, and you have an EP coming out. I do. It's a sad song EP called Tell Your Story. All me, no features. It's okay. It's just real personal. I f like I said, I feel like a lot of people going to relate, and yeah. Was it a personal choice to have, like, no features on the EP? Yeah, kind of. It was just like I just wanted all me. You know, I had this song that I would leave him alone with three features on there. So I was just like, right, it could just be all me. On this project, I just really want to get across who Layton Green is before <laughs> getting into all of that. Because I got my whole career to come out. But I have collabed with certain artists already. So, yeah, album coming, top of 2020. <laughs> we can talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brand name, you have a cool name. That's your new, real name, right? What, Layton Green? Yeah. yeah, I feel like you could have like a Crayola color for real. Yeah, my mom was gonna name me Sage Green because my brother's name is Hunter, so that's a color. Ah, yeah, that she is. She was gonna name me Sage Green, and that's also a color. But she said, like, someone walked in the hotel room and or not the hotel, the hospital room, and his name was Layton on his badge. And she was like, Oh, no, nah, that's too pretty to be a uh, boy's name. Oh. I'm about to name him Layton. That is name gorgeous. It's a beautiful yeah. name. It really is. No, that's a brand name. Like, here's I, I hated my name growing up. Maybe not, maybe why? I don't know. I was like Layton. Like, what? what who is Layton? Like, you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to change my name so bad, and I'm gonna be honest. I wanted to give myself a stage name, and everybody's like, Nah, Layton Green is just that's it. That's it. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Okay. Look, you can have your Crayola. Yeah, everybody love it. You can have the Crayola color. Then you can have the wig color. <laughs> Lady, listen, I'm telling you, you can have that. I see it on Instagram now. Uh, okay, <laughs> cross promotions. Let me just get a percentage because I'm really yeah. good with giving people ideas. <laughs> no, no, super dope. But outside of music, um, what what else can we expect from you? What outside else would you music, love to do? Um, I want to be an actress. Bad, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be in these movies, some type of show. I'm trying to get on there real soon. Somebody show. Somebody her, show. Hop on there, you know what I'm saying? Making an appearance. I also want to model. Mm -hmm. And yeah, own a few businesses. My, I'm about to get my mama food truck so she can run that. Oh, that's nice. So she love cooking. So she where's does. your family based at now? Well, my mom lives with me. Okay. Uh, my dad. Lives in, I'm from East St. Louis, so mm -hmm. he lives in East St. Louis still. And my brother, he's stationed in Virginia. Well, not stationed, but he's living in Virginia. Okay. Yeah. I went to school in Virginia, so I understand that area. 757, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay, now how proud is your family of you, though? Uh, they're super proud, you know. Um, but a lot of times they don't really vocalize it, but I see it, mm -hmm. you know. My parents do. My dad, every time he sees me. Like, a lot of the times, well, growing up, they didn't really believe that I could, you know, come this far. Mm -hmm. like, especially when I had dropped out of high school, I remember having a conversation with my dad, and he was just like, I, I, I want to do music. I don't know how it's going to happen, but uh, that's what I want to do, because he right. just sat me down, and he's like, all right, you to the point where you need to know what you're doing in life. But right. I was just like, I want to do that, and he was against it. He's like, you need to go to college, and you need to do this, and you need to do that, and I was just like, and I knew it, you know, I... Coming from a family where they, all they know is work, you right. know, a nine to five, I, I expected that from them. I mean, they didn't never think bigger so or outside the box. I'm just like, oh, no. Nah. So the only one thinking like this. I'm like, I don't know how it's going to happen. But, yeah, my dad, he, 
He thanks me every time he sees me. He be like, thank you for not listening to me. <laughs> right. But you know what you probably did, though? You probably sparked something new or planted a new seed in your yeah. parents and inspired yeah. new hope. You know for what sure. I mean? Because yeah. I feel like even with my parents and grandparents, a lot of times we all have parents mm -hmm. and families that are built with structure mm -hmm. and used to having just a nine to five right. and being able right. to financially provide for the family. And you need to do the same for thing, sure. you sure. know, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you think was the biggest struggle that you were able to bounce back from that helped you get here? Mm, the biggest struggle. Well, I would say when I went home, we, was, we went homeless with my mom and my brother. This is after my mom and my dad had separated and we was living in a motel. And my mom, she really suffers from bipolar depression, stuff that she went through in her childhood. And so, like, she's just, like, real kind of negative. And I'm just, like, completely opposite. Mm -hmm. I feel like things that I've seen in my life just made me who I am, of course. And seeing how my mom was, I, it just made me the complete opposite. I just, like, dang, I don't, you know, want to get there. You know, I did go through a lot as a kid, but I always had a certain way of handling it. Really not handling it <laughs> and just ignoring it and... Just not using it as an excuse, you know? But I feel like when we were homeless, that was like where I became depressed and I was just like, sort of depressed because it was like, you looking for your mom for, you looking at your mom like for some type of positivity. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, we gonna get out of here, but she not talking like that. And it's like, you know, so I, I came to the conclusion to just leave myself and left them there to just find better. Okay, and, and, Lastly, what do you want everyone to know about Leighton Green? If, if people never heard the name, they've never heard any of your songs, what do they want to know? What do you want them to know about you? Um, just an everyday girl, just singing about real stuff, you know what I'm saying? Just real authentic, not trying to sugarcoat nothing. Just me. Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Don't sugarcoat it. You real. Popeyes. Popeyes. That's it. Did you have a chicken sandwich? I haven't. Well, you know what? They, like said, they, my head like, they said they sold out. They done. I'm done for it. You, right. you done for. Now you got to go to okay, KFC for their vegan nuggets or whatever they got oh, Y'all seen that. I want to try them, actually. <laughs> yeah, I hope they line in here and like the Popeyes. No, probably won't. Not for that. Oh, my gosh. Layton, where can everyone <laughs> find you at? Layton Green, L-A-Y-T-O-N Green with an E at the end. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time thank today. You for having me. Come back anytime. Anytime, yeah, for sure.